Okay, you're in Microsoft Word and you want to get rid of large gaps in your document. You can see I've got a few here. So I'm going to show you how to do this manually, but I'll also provide a one click solution via this macro, which will basically get rid of all of the gaps in your document. So to do this manually, your first step is to click on this button here on the home tab of the ribbon. It's called the show hide button. And what that's going to do is show any non-printing characters in your document. So for example, you can see these paragraph marks here. Now, if you see consecutive empty paragraph marks, then that'd be an obvious reason for there being a gap in your document. And really all you need to do is backspace those paragraph marks. But often the gaps are not as a result of those empty paragraph marks. The other thing you want to do is search for section breaks and page breaks. So down here, you'll see I've got a page break. Now that is where someone has forced a new page after these bullet points. And you do that, by the way, by going to layout break page, or you can use the shortcut key control enter. Now, if you want to get rid of that page break, all you do is you click in front of it, to the left of it, and then just press delete on your keyboard and that'll get rid of the page break. You can see I've got an empty paragraph mark there. So also I would delete that via my keyboard. Now, the other thing you might see is a section break. And that is where someone's gone to lay out break and next page section break. So sections are used to apply different page level formatting to different parts of the document. So an example of that would be where someone wants one page in the middle of their document to be landscape rather than portrait. And to get rid of that, all you do is you click in front of it. So it'll either be within a paragraph like it is here, or it'll be on a separate line. And again, you just press delete on your keyboard. Now the rest of the gaps in this document are not due to page breaks, section breaks, or empty paragraphs. All the other gaps are caused by pagination settings. So that's what we need to look at next. So let's deal with this gap here. I'm gonna click into this heading and then on the home tab, I'm gonna click in the paragraph group on this launcher button. And I'm going to move over to the indents and spacing tab that may be selected by default. And the first thing I'm going to look at are these settings here. We've got paragraph spacing options before and after. And you can see here that we've got a very large before spacing value. Now, if I take that down to something sensible like 12 points and then click on OK, you can see it closes that gap. Okay, let's scroll through the rest of the document. Now you can see I've got a gap here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually select this text here and go back to the paragraph settings dialog box. Now the issue here isn't with spacing, it's actually to do with the pagination settings. Now the one that's actually causing the issue here is keep with next. Basically that forces the paragraphs that we've currently got selected to remain on the same page. So if I untick that and then click on OK, you can see that it fills the gap above. Now you can see that actually all the text does remain successfully on the same page. So that setting wasn't actually needed. It was needlessly causing that gap. OK, so we've got another spacing issue here. Now, if I look down on the following page, I've got a large paragraph here and this space is also caused by pagination issues. So if I click into that paragraph and click on this paragraph settings launcher again, the problem here is not with keep with next because we haven't got two paragraphs that we need to keep together. It's actually with this setting, keep lines together. So that forces the whole paragraph to be on the same page. So if I untick it and click on OK, you can see that we now get rid of that gap. Now, if I scroll down, we've got this massive space here on this page, and this is caused by this heading. 
again it's a pagination setting so i go back to the paragraph settings dialog box i'm on the line and page breaks tab and this problem is caused by the page break before setting so i'll just untick that and click on ok and that takes that heading up onto the previous page i might also close that gap now, if you ever have this scenario where you have a gap at the top of the page and at the bottom of the page, it could be to do with the vertical alignment within your document or within a section within the document. Now, to fix that, you go to the Layout tab on your ribbon. Then you go to the Page Setup Launcher and you need to make sure you're on the Layout tab and you change this vertical alignment setting to Top, which is what it is by default. Click on OK, and that will resolve the gap at the top of the page. OK, so this is the way to manually go through each gap on your document and resolve the problem. Now, if you have a much larger document and you want a one-click solution, then I suggest you use the macro I'm providing with this tutorial. Now, this macro is easy to install, and I've provided the code for it via a link in the description of this video. It's a good idea to show the developer tab on your ribbon if you're using macros. It won't show by default, so right click on one of the other tabs, go to customize the ribbon, and then just tick this option here. Click on OK to confirm. Select the developer tab, and you'll see over on the left here you have a visual basic button, so click on that. Now make sure the project explorer is open, so that's this pane on the left of the screen. If you can't see it, go to View, Project Explorer. And you're looking for a project called Normal. You need to select it and then insert a module. You'll see a module there which will be selected. And then all you need to do is paste the code that I've provided for you into the code window. It'll look like this. Then you can close down the Visual Basic Editor. Then what you want to do is create a button that's going to run the macro. Now I've got a button on this macros tab. I'll show you how to create that tab and to include a button. So right click on one of the other tabs, go to customize the ribbon. Now you can see my macros tab there. I'll just get rid of that and we'll recreate it. So what I would do is probably select something like the developer tab in this list and then create a new tab. Where it says new tab custom, you need to give that tab a name. So I'll call it macros. And then you're going to need to give a name to the group. So I'll call this pagination for argument's sake. Then with that pagination tab still selected, in this menu where it currently says popular commands, choose macros. Then you want to add this macro, which starts with the words remove all formatting, to this group. So all you do is click on add. Then you can go to rename and choose an image for the button. So I chose something like that. And then give the button a name. Click on OK and then click on OK. So I've got the same document here that has the same spacing problems. So rather than going through each of the gaps one at a time, I can just go to my Macros tab and then click on this button. Now what it's going to do is ask you for the default spacing you want between paragraphs. And a good setting is 12, but you can change that if you want. Then click on OK. And then click on OK again. And if you look at your document, all the spacing issues will have been resolved. Now, if you're interested in how the code works, I'll just briefly take you through it. Now, if you're using heading styles, you probably want to retain some of the settings that create gaps in your document. So when I say headings, I mean the heading styles that appear here. Sometimes we deliberately apply pagination settings to headings. So the macro, first of all, asks you what your desired paragraph spacing is. And 12 points is a good setting, and that's the default. So the first thing it does is deal with all the page break before settings that might be applied even to heading styles. 
Then it deals with the keep with next and keep together pagination settings and the paragraph spacing before and after. It also deals with any page alignment issues, changing them back to the vertical top alignment. Then it deals with all section breaks, and it does that by using a find and replace. You can actually do that using this combination of characters. So if you're in Word and you're using find and replace, which is control H, you can use carrot B to find section breaks. Then we do the same for page breaks and that's carrot M. And then what it does is remove any empty paragraphs. And it does this by looking for two paragraphs together and replacing it with one paragraph. And I do that a few times just to get rid of multiple paragraphs. And then once that's all done, you just get a nice little message telling you that all the gaps have been removed. Now, the fact that you saved it in the normal template means that this macro will be available to any documents that you use going forward. The normal template is the one that all blank documents are based on. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next video.